Well, here we go. After 25 years together on the anchor desk here at Fox 2, tonight Monica, Gail, and I bid you farewell. Now, this is our final newscast for both of us. It has been a privilege to be welcomed into your homes each and every night. 25 years is a long time. Fox 2's Amy Lang joins us now with more. Well, I can tell you that it has been an absolute privilege for my 24 years here to be working with you and to be learning from you. And you're such incredible people. I mean, these are our anchors. They keep us grounded and steady and steadfast in times of trouble and joy. And today, as we say goodbye, we salute you. We say thank you. First of all, to you, Monica Gale, for a job well done. Promise to solve problems, find solutions, demand action. A pledge made 25 years ago when Monica Gale and Hill Perkins brought their poise, professionalism, and commitment to community to the Fox 2 News Desk as the station's main anchors. We've been a great team for 25 years together, and I think that's pretty extraordinary. 25 years, 25 years. My wife and I have been married 38 years. Monica and I have been together on that anchor desk 25 years. That's longer than a lot of other people have been married. It's been, I think, a partnership, a team made in heaven. A team that's seen, that's covered so many big stories, so much history in those two and a half decades. But one story both remember so well was one of their first. <laughs> the implosion of the old Hudson's building in 1998. You can see the cloud now. The two anchoring the big event from several blocks away. Monica and I live on television. But it wasn't far enough. The charges go off, the building starts to fall. There's this huge cloud of dust that goes up initially and then starts rolling toward us. <laughs> It was a little alarming when we saw that big, you know, mountain of smoke and ash and debris coming at us. We stayed right there, we put on some masks, but I'm still coughing up that dust now. <laughs> I guess we're part of history right now, aren't we? We are indeed. Monica never was afraid to be in the trenches. Her career prior to Fox 2 launching from college in her native Washington state to local news in several markets to CBS network news in New York. When I sort of Look back on where I started, I had absolutely no idea where this career would take me. I started out shooting and editing um, my own stuff, reporting and anchoring and producing the shows. But then her career took off. I worked for stations around the country and spent several years at the network level, covering stories coast to coast and overseas. Monica Gale reporting. Good evening. I remember covering the 92 convention and I have a picture of Dan Rather and I sitting at the anchor desk. I had to pinch myself and say I can't believe I'm doing this. But she always knew she'd come back to local news and when Detroit came calling she and her husband Dean said yes they had a new baby on the way and were ready to put down some roots. Having a family a marriage, you know, a home base was always really important to me. So I think I've had sort of the best of both worlds. She admits it was a little daunting moving to Michigan. After all, she wasn't from here. I felt very welcomed. I feel like our viewers have wrapped their arms around me. I feel very blessed and grateful for that. I've always felt um, part of this community. And here at Fox 2, she was able to cover the kinds of stories that matter to her, like traveling to Honduras for Operation Smile, highlighting life-changing surgeries for children born with a cleft palate. Women and children of families are, are important to me, and that's sort of been um, my niche, I guess, if you will. And that's evident in her work on air and in the community, where she'll now have more time to dedicate to causes she cares about. I truly believe that, you know, women need to feel empowered to take care of their families and they need the tools and the resources to do that so any organization any cause that um, facilitates that i want to continue to be part of it it's it's close to my heart which isn't lost on those who've worked with monica who know her and love her she's just an amazing amazing journalist but i think what really sets her apart is her heart she is so compassionate and cares about people, really, really cares about people. She loves jokes, she loves to laugh, and we did a lot of that during the commercials. She's just a joy to work with, and, and, and this community is really so lucky to have had her. I think that what people don't know is Monica was the one behind, let's all get together and have a karaoke party. Let's all get together and, um, you know, somebody's birthday's coming up, someone's getting married, what are we doing? It was always about the team, 
and the product, always, and the family. And um, she will be very missed. Monica is really one of the most impressive people I've met in news. With Monica, she was always just that very, very calm, collected person who held us together. She is a woman filled with compassion, love, kindness, brilliant too. But above all, her compassion for people. I think that is evident in the way she delivers the news and it's also evident away from the anchor desk. I mean, she is the kind of friend that will be there for life. A friend whose talents extend beyond the newsroom, whether she's gardening or decorating or cooking or singing. Oh, but it's cold outside. But Monica's true passion is her family, husband Dean, son Tanner, and her mother Patty. She's in her mid-80s and I really am looking forward to having time with her where we can just have some fun and, and just enjoy one-on-one -on -one time with her. You realize, you know, time is so precious and you want to make the most of the time that you have left. Her family thinks so too. Here we are to retirement. It's absolutely amazing to me. And I'm very proud of her and, and her career. We're just excited to have unlimited time and as we choose with no time constraints. I might be a little bit greedy even with the time I want with her. <laughs> I just love her to pieces and and am excited for what's ahead. Respect and admire just aren't big enough words. I mean, it's truly amazing what she's been able to accomplish. I, I'm just, I love her so much. I'm just so proud of her and I'm so excited to, to see what comes next. And I'm just grateful to have been a part of it, you know, the whole way. For as great as her career has been and as good as she is on air and in people's homes and television, she's better as a wife and a, a mother. She's. She is the best. Now is Monica time. This is go time for Monica. It's time to get out there and do what she wants to do without schedule. So I'm so looking forward to it. I can't wait to have her full time. Their gain is our loss, but we could not be more grateful for the time we've had with Monica Gale. Monica is an amazing human being, a wonderful partner and a great friend. I could not have imagined this journey without her. I'm really blessed and grateful that this is where we landed. It's been a good run. It's been a great run. Oh, Amy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you're you, welcome. Thank you. Just you so are so beautiful. special to us. Well, the and your love family, is going oh my right gosh, back to you. It's so much fun talking to your family. Oh. They are so excited. I'm so, so excited. It's so lovely to hear my them. mom's voice. Oh, I mean, she's still trying to figure out the whole uh, Zoom well, call thing. I know. I understand she might still have a flip phone, so yeah. that yeah. is okay. We just talked on the phone and we had a wonderful yeah. conversation. Yes. That's and Patty. She's so proud of you and yes. so yes. looking forward to seeing you. Oh, well, it was just a beautiful, beautiful tribute. And my heart is so full. So full. Well, we are so grateful for you. Thanks, Amy. Absolutely. We love you. Okay, well, we've got more, more reminiscing to do, I guess. Uh, we'll be right back after this break. Stay with us. Huel Perkins, you say the name and you think integrity, compassion, and an adopted Detroiter who's made this city proud. Tonight, a behind the scenes look at the man who came here three decades ago, signing off tonight one last time. One thing is for sure, he will never be forgotten. In 1989, Detroit meets its newest anchor, TV2 as we were called, named Huel Perkins as their noon and 4 p.m. edition, paired with Sherry Margolis. From the moment we met, we just clicked. We love to talk politics. We love to talk about the issues of the day. We love to talk about religion. We discussed everything in the office that we shared together. Huel became a friend of the city quickly, a Detroit favorite, but his story started down south. A native son of Louisiana, the man who ultimately brought Huel to Detroit is Steve Antonetti. But it all started when Huel was in law school while also working as an anchor in Baton Rouge. Steve was in St. Louis and flew to see Huel with an idea. What do you remember about that dinner? 
Well, the, the main thing was I explained what we were trying to do, but he said that he didn't eat chicken because his, I think his grandfather had choked on a chicken bone or something like that. And he, he, so when we were ordering, <laughs> it's strange, but that's the one thing I remember yeah. from the dinner, other than having a good discussion with him about possibly coming to St. Louis. And literally wrote a figure on a napkin, which was more money than I've ever seen in my life, and pushed it my way. And I said, um, well, um, I think I may try it. I'm Karen Foss. And I'm Hugh Perkins, sitting in for Dick Ford. I went up there, it worked out, the audience responded to me, and then Steve became the general manager here in Detroit. He knew when my contract was up, and what did he do? He said, Huel, it's time to move again. He never made it all about him, ever. He made it a point to turn that bright spotlight away from him and onto the world he saw. From Nelson Mandela to Rosa Parks, Perkins has interviewed countless high-profile leaders, but it's his connection to everyday Detroiters that cemented his legacy in our city. And he would just go in and not try to do what he thought others would do. He just tried to do fuel. It is still a problem today, but it's a problem that can be solved. And if you look closely, you can see the signs of new life and new hope. Huell's wife Priscilla says humility and authenticity are two qualities that people don't just see, but feel when they watch him. But in terms of what space there is between who you see on TV and who you see at home, there's little. What you see with him is what you get. And that's the integrity part of it. I have um, been with Huell 40 years almost as long as he's been a newscaster. And what I've always admired about him, and I've always told him, I said, even if we weren't a couple anymore, he would still be the first person I'd call if I had a problem, if I wanted to resolve an issue, if I wanted money advice. <laughs> you know he'll... Because he's just that kind of guy. Good evening, I'm Hugh Perkins. And I'm Monica Gale. Then he met his co-host in 1997. It was his pairing with Monica Gale that began a new chapter of television in Detroit, a pair that would be together for 25 years. Monica Gale and I gelled immediately. Even though we come from different places, I'm from Louisiana, she's from the state of Washington, she has had network experience. Most of my experience has been in local news, but as soon as we sat together on that anchor desk, a team was born. It was immediate, it was, I would say, internal. It was something that was miraculous. You've seen the campaign ads and the finger pointing. The big issues. It was very easy. It's always been really easy. And I think there is something um, really special about that, that it wasn't work to sit on the set together. We could anticipate each other's moves and we've always had each other's backs. Um, it just has been a very easy on-air relationship and a beautiful friendship. A friendship that soared, along with ratings. Viewers made Fox 2 News appointment TV. Years later, Thursday night, Huell brought the heat and the heaviest hitting topics to let it rip. Sam, I don't know whether you're crazy or arrogant or both, but we thank you for being here live with us. Well, it takes one to know one, whatever I am. Well, let me tell you this, let's get right to business. Calling Otis Mathis, who is 55 years old, a young man who maybe didn't know better. I mean, Kill, I how can you man. possibly Kill, just, you and I, just one From racial unrest. The police now advancing on the protesters. Jessica, take it away. COVID cases continue to climb in Michigan, the state reporting nearly. To the onslaught of COVID-19 that brought with it sadness and loss still Perkins always believes. And I look forward because as he always says, the best is yet to come. Perhaps it's that contagious optimism blended with his no-nonsense style that everyone saw when Huell first got here. The people of Detroit embraced him even when the newspapers didn't. Mort Meisner was Huell's boss in St. Louis and Detroit. He remembers early on a TV columnist in the 90s calling him with this. You know that that long, tall drink of water you brought in from St. Louis? I said, Huel Perkins? He said, yeah, Huel. He may be a nice guy, but I'm going to write my lead item in the free press. My next column is going to be, Huel Perkins isn't going to last 18 months in Detroit. So I think back all this time, 
She was right. Yule Perkins didn't last 18 months. Darn it, he lasted 31 years. Never has anyone been more wrong. About someone who is just so right. So as Huel Perkins signs off after an incredible career. Wanted to ask you what's next for Huel Perkins. Nothing. Come on. <laughs> there has to be something in your mind that you're not saying that you could tell us. Give us a hint. Are, do you have any ideas about future businesses, maybe some leadership programs? What are you thinking about? Here's what I want to do. I want to make sure that there more people than ever before earn money. I think money is far more important than people admit or realize. And I want to be sure that everybody has access to increasing their earning potential in life. I don't know what that is. But it's all right now, right? No, it's been good all the way. You go. He looks forward to the future filled with filling other people's days with light. But I'm also going to write music. I have no talent, but I just bought a 88 key piano. I'm going to write music. But what will certainly be music to Huell's ears, not praise, not a reminder of his awards or the ratings he racked up, but instead a nod to the love Detroit has given him. Besides the, 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 the great ties and pocket squares and the, and the tailored suits, uh, <laughs> I think it's because he brings a certain sincerity and skill set and knowledge. He is the ultimate preparer. Whether he's just gonna interview a grandmother who's turned 100, or a diplomat, or a governor, the same amount of preparation. I have seen my husband work. And through the television, we all have seen the end result of that work, including Huell's proud mother, Mrs. Thelma Perkins, at 95. It was very wonderful. I really did enjoy seeing him on TV and doing such a tremendous job because I know how television is from so competitive. They're not doing a good job. They don't say that. <laughs> I'm Huel Perkins. Join Sherry Margulis and Dean. Even though other media outlets enjoy interest, our best weapons are knowledge the number of stories we've heard from people who say you've helped their families, you've helped them, whether it be at a grocery store, a person on the side of the road, that's who you are, and that's what Detroit's gonna remember about you. Well, I, I don't know what to say. I do it out of a sense of gratitude. The gifts that I have been given are so tremendous. I must share them with the world when I can, and that's what I try to do. And for three decades, this television station, this city, is better because of those gifts. Jill Monica, as we say, our adieus here on the set, I do want to say to you both what tremendous mentors and friends you both have been. Huel, since the age of 14, when I was a little kid, you were there for me. You've been there for countless people. You still were able to, like Monica, save a little bit of yourself mm. for the people that matter the most, your family. And they're all watching this right now in the other room. And I just want to say from your Fox 2 family, Thank you a million times over. We can never repay the debt. Well, thank you for that beautiful piece. Uh, it, was, it was marvelous. I, I am filled with joy. I am too. Uh, you know, I, too. I said this is not a wait. This is not a sad time. This is a happy time. We are going to a new stage in our lives, having done something for 25 years together. I think that has left some influence and mark in this city that is positive, and we're well, happy. And all of your tributes are such a true gift to all of us. It's just, it's thank so, so beautiful. So thank you so much. Thank you. You've left uh, an indelible mark in the hearts of everybody watching and of course us here at Fox 2. So best to you. And as you always say, the best is yet to come. And Monica says, don't say goodbye. We're only a phone call away. So always. taking you up for that. Always. Right. Both of you. Thank, right. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Please stay with us for our final farewell. When we come back. It was 2004, the Pistons had just won the championship, and the longtime meteorologist here, Chris Edwards, retired suddenly, and I was promoted to evenings with Dan and Huel and Monica. It's gonna feel like the holidays out there, and I honestly can say they, they welcomed me with open arms. 
Kuhl and Monica are the, are the best at being able to bounce things off of. So when I'm up at the green screen doing weather, you know, pointing out where the threatening weather is, and they're here in the studio, and I'm able to use them as a crutch to get from A to B to C, it's been a godsend. One thing I have Hill and Monica to thank is for putting up with all my bull over the years. So many times I'm over at my little weather station and I'm singing, and I'm singing like this. To all the girls I've loved before. And I can see them, they're just shaking their head, and never once have they said, Luderman, shut up, you know? So they've put up with me and all of my shtick through the years, and uh, I thank you for it. Kiel Monica, thank you for allowing me to be me over there. Yeah, Rich, we put up with you all these years, and we're <laughs> gonna pull something at Tom Brady right now. We're unretiring! No, not really. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> To work 40 years in television news doing something we love is remarkable. And to have the privilege of working with the same team in the same city with loyal viewers like you for 25 years is extraordinary. And for that, we are so grateful. Grateful that you have embraced us as part of your family, invited us into your homes, allowed us to tell your stories, to share your joy, your sorrow, your dreams, to cheer with you when the Red Wings won the Stanley <laughs> Cup or the Tigers made it to the World Series or even as the Lions just kept trying and trying to do the best they could. <laughs> but you have given us a front row seat to some amazing events. Well, one of the first big stories that Hugh and I covered, and you saw it earlier, was the Hudson's implosion. And we were wearing masks that day because of all the ash and the fallout. And it's kind of ironic, all these years later, as we wrap up our careers here at Fox 2, we've had to wear masks because of COVID. And even though we have been separated for much of the past two years, we have never stopped being a team. And we have never stopped caring for you. It has been an honor to give you the information you need to live a better life. But it is also our mission to give you the truth, even when the truth is painful to hear. We have been through so much together. The fall of the Twin Towers on 9-11, political scandals, even mass shootings. And yet, even in our darkest hours, we have always found a way to heal and to hope. Mm -hmm. Our team is so much more than those of us you see on your screen every night. Our gratitude to our management team, Greg, Kevin, Laura, Deb, Anitra, our longtime Nightside producers, Ken, Rebecca, Tiffany, John, Maggie, our dedicated team of writers and photographers and editors. This doesn't happen every day here without all of you. So top job. And to our tech team and our studio crew, you pivoted kept us on the air from home under some very challenging circumstances during the pandemic. Thank you. In fact, we appreciate all 175 members of the current Fox 2 family and all of the wonderful testimonials from mm -hmm. everyone we work with over the past two decades. It has been beautiful. To my parents, may my dad rest in peace. They nurtured and encouraged my dreams. They set an alarm so they could wake up in the middle of the night to watch me on TV when I landed at the network. I love you forever. To my husband, Dean, you're my rock. Couldn't have done this without you. To our son, Tanner, thanks for sharing your mom with the TV world, for being my cheerleader and making my heart full every day. And to my parents, who knocked down the walls of segregation so their son could walk through. To Priscilla, my darling wife of 38 years, the star of the moon, the guiding light of our family, and to our sons, Jared and Vincent, who make their father proud of the men they have become. I love you all, and I owe you all a debt I can never repay. To this guy sitting next to me, 25 years together, that's one heck of a run. We're so grateful for our partnership on this desk, yes. most of all for our friendship. We've laughed, we've cried, we've always had each other's backs. Now, I don't think we'll probably miss our late night work schedule, but I do know I will miss seeing you every day. I wish you and Priscilla and the boys so many healthy, happy years ahead. I want you to embark on this new chapter and enjoy every minute. I love you, my friend. I love you too, my partner, my friend. I wish you and Dean a lifetime of fun and adventures around the world, but no matter where you roam, you mm -hmm. always will find our door open a good meal and some good wine there too. 
we'll be there. To all of you out there, thank you for putting your trust in us, for allowing us into your homes every night. We never take that for granted. As the late, great Carol Burnett used to say when she closed out her show, I'm so glad, we're so glad we had this time together. And as I always say, the future <laughs> is in your hands and the best is yet to come. Good night and thank you all. We love you. Got some oh my God. All oh, right. What? <laughs> no wow. problem. I know. No <laughs> problem. <laughs> thank oh, you so much. I love you too. Thank you. Thank Wonderful. you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Nope, oh, really right there. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful.